Little would they suspect what wild treasures are lurking nearby, beneath these murky waters. The great crested newt. Dragons of the amphibian world, they're the largest and most threatened of our three native newt species. Lee Brady is an ecologist, county recorder for newts and also president of the Kent Reptile and Amphibian Group. Hello, Lee. Hello. With those credentials, he's got the licence and, more importantly, the experience to handle these protected species. Is it unusual to find great crested newts in a, essentially a swimming pool? It, it's not particularly unusual, and we do, we do actually find great crested newts in a wide range of different water bodies, including swimming pools like this. Now, what's interesting about this pool is that, potentially, the newts are doing quite well here. Mm. So we're trying to investigate and find out why that might be. And how many do you reckon are in there? We've got what we would call a medium relative population. That's a maximum count of about 15 individuals. The great crested newt. Why the crest? Well, the males have a crest only during the breeding season, and it's part of their secondary sexual characteristics in order to attract a female. Ah, it's always about the showing off, isn't it? It is. And some males have bigger crests than others. Of course. We believe the crest helps the animal to breathe underwater. Newts can absorb oxygen across their skin. So great crested newts with larger crests potentially can absorb more oxygen and therefore stay under the water for longer. Males with smaller crests that have to come to the surface for a gulp of air will lose the interest of the female. So larger crests are better, potentially. But interestingly, they don't keep the crest all year round. No, outside of the breeding season, the animals typically are found on land and the crest would be an impediment to their movement on land. So they reabsorb the crest back into their bodies. It's so clever, isn't it? Shall we have a look at some now? Let's have a look. Thank you. How many different species of newt in here? We've got female great crested newts, and we've got smooth and palmate newts. So this particular swimming pool actually supports all three of the native newt species in Britain. Brilliant. So what I'd like to do is to show you a great crested newt belly. Yes, please. What have you got here? This is a squash box. A squash box. It doesn't literally squash them. <laughs> it holds them gently against a uh, clear surface. Oh, look at that! <laughs> so she's having a little wriggle in there, Lee. She is having a little wriggle. I'm being careful I don't squash her too much. Yeah, she's fine. She's, she's fine. fine. For no, anybody she's... watching at home, she's absolutely fine. So, so very bright. Yeah. Black blotches with a unique pattern. These markings are completely individual. This is its barcode, in, in essence. It is. We can identify each animal in this pool from its belly pattern. It's a very, very bright colour. Is that a warning signal as well? It does. It tells predators that they're distasteful. In terms of this pool, is it quite a dreamy situation for newts? The swimming pool is very good for the newts because it's full of food. The newts are very well fed. Um, I suspect that they're also still egg-laying, and in fact today we have found a number of eggs in the pond. Which so perhaps, they're breeding? Yeah, yeah, they're laying eggs. One of the things that we want to discover is whether those eggs are hatching successfully and whether the tadpoles are successfully metamorphosing into juveniles. There we are, little ones. Back in your nice, watery home.